and purpose and fulfilling that in, in our lives. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay, the title of the message tonight is Your Calling. So what we want to look at is what is your calling and how do you know if you have been called and if you're walking in your calling? Uh, we'll look first at 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, um, verse 8, we see that this is God. Uh, and then verse 9, it says that God who has called us, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That's the first part of that ninth verse. So he has called us, he's saved us. So if you have been saved, and I know everyone here has been saved, if you have been saved, you have also been called. Called by God according to his purposes and his grace. So he granted grace to you in Jesus Christ uh, before time began. And it's a holy calling. So if you've been saved, you've been called with a holy calling. Mm -hmm. And so holy is not something that you do or that you accomplish on your own or by your works. And so this is a very important verse uh, that we have been saved and we have been called and it's with a holy calling. So we're going to talk about how can we walk in a holy calling. And there are really a, a couple of important things here and one is according to God's purpose and according to God's grace. So let's focus a little bit at the beginning of the message on grace. And what is grace? Well, it's the operational power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, quite, uh, quite briefly, that's a way to look at it. It is the operational power of the Holy Spirit. So if you have a calling on your life, and you do, then God gives you grace. And, and that grace see, is superhuman ability. It's the ability mm -hmm. that begins when your natural ability ends. So you have so much natural ability to do any particular thing. And beyond that, you can't do it. And it's only then that grace kicks in. So grace begins when your natural ability ends. And so it's God's ability working in you. So it's superhuman ability working in you that allow you to fulfill your calling. And let me say this about calling. The only way you will be satisfied in this life mm -hmm. is by fulfilling your calling. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because it was put inside of you uh, in eternity. Before time began, there was a calling upon your life. And so that's, you've got to fulfill it in order uh, to be satisfied in this lifetime. There's a lot of people out there looking, uh, doing things, uh, trying to do, trying to find things that satisfy, but nothing satisfies like Jesus Christ and being in his will and in his uh, purpose. So the purpose that God had for you. And we know from Ephesians that he, he created works for you to do. Uh, before he ever created the earth, he had works for you to do. You are his workmanship. Uh, the Greek word is like our word poem. So you're a poem. You're a message. Ooh, you're a man. message Hallelujah. written to the universe, written to all of humanity. It's got your God's message uh, to be proclaimed. So let's look at grace because grace is a superhuman ability. And you've been called not to do natural things, not to do mundane things, but you've been mm -hmm. called to do mm -hmm. superhuman exploits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Superhuman exploits with God's superhuman ability, which is called grace. So how do we get grace? Well, the thing about grace we see from James chapter four, uh, verse six that he gives us more and more grace. The Amplified says he gives us more and more grace to defy sin and live an obedient life. So we want to turn from sin and live an obedient life. And the only thing that's going to empower us to do that is the grace of God. See, uh, Romans chapter six was uh, 
and seven uh, was Paul's uh, description of how he tried to do the right thing in his own strength and he couldn't do it. And so whenever he knew what to do, but he just couldn't do it because you cannot do it in your own strength. You need superhuman strength and that's the grace of God. And so he gives us more and more of that. So let's look at that process, how he gives us more and more. And so he gives, uh, the other part of that verse says, he resists the proud, but he gives grace, grace to, to the, the humble. humble. So Amen. the humble are those. Uh, so when you're humble and thankful and sacrificial, then he gives you grace. And, that, and the reason um, that we want to be sacrificial, uh, a couple of reasons. And one, we want the disciple is to be like the master. And Jesus uh, sacrificed himself and he served other people and he died on the cross for us. So he's a great sacrifice. And so for us to be his disciples, we have to be like him. Uh, and that is to live a sacrificial life. Uh, and, and it's not to go through our suffering here because Jesus has already done this. When I'm talking about a sacrificial life, it, it's not to bring redemption to mankind. Jesus did that. That's finished. We're just to uh, demonstrate the life of Jesus Christ Amen. in us. Amen. And that's a, a disciple will be uh, live a sacrificial life. Jesus said in Matthew 16, uh, 24, that we are to lay down our life and take up the cross. Mm, take up the cross mm, mm. Uh, and follow him. So if we're going to be a disciple and follow him, there has to be some sacrifice. Now, Romans 12. Uh, verses one and two says that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. sacrifice. And so our, our uh, sacrifice is first of all, to present our bodies, which is our life, our mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body, because the body is the vessel that carries our spirit and soul. So when we present our body as a living sacrifice on the altar of God, and that means we sacrifice, we begin to think his things, uh, thoughts, we begin to do his deeds, and we begin to get his results. And so surrendering to the Lord, that's what we're talking about here. And what does that do? Well, Jesus said, this is a very powerful verse in Matthew 23, verse 19, he says, the altar sanctifies the sacrifice or the offering. Mm, so mm, when mm. we put our body uh, and our life on God's altar, we become holy. It's not oh, by our works. It, it's not by our works. It's not by what we've done because we've all done mess. We've all done things that, that have not pleased God, that have been evil. Uh, and even uh, uh, things that have been unholy and the things that have defiled us. There's nothing that we, on our own ability, can do to get rid of those. But when we put our bodies, present our bodies as a living sacrifice on the altar of God, we become holy. He, re he returns us to innocence by putting our body and keeping our body on his altar. We become holy. That's a, that is exciting. This is a a powerful scripture that Jesus said, it's his altar that sanctifies, sanctifies the sacrifice or the offering. So when we present our bodies, a living sacrifice, then we're able to walk in a holy calling. Ooh, holy calling. So it's Amen. not anything that we've done, it's just simply yielding to his plan, the plan that he had before creation, and he has given us, he's given us a grant, this is what the Amplified says, uh, back in 2 uh, Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9 says, he has given us a grant of grace in Christ mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. In eternity. So it, it before he created mm. the universe, he gave us a grant of grace. Woo, hallelujah. Okay, but well, it says that we stand in that grace. So the Amplified said on James 4, verse 6, that we get more and more grace. So how do we get more and more grace? Well, it has to do with our response. 
when God intervenes in our life, and that's what grace is, it's an intervention. It's his power operating in his life. When he intervenes in your life, what is your response? See, if you're thankful and sacrificial, then he's going to give you more grace. Okay, now let's look at the uh, Hezekiah. He, he was a he was a, a great king, and and people really celebrated his life and all. And in Second Chronicles chapter thirty two verses twenty four and twenty five, it said that God healed him, but he did not respond in an appropriate way. He was not thankful because he was proud. Okay, mm. let's look at that. Mm. God healed him. There was a supernatural intervention in Hezekiah's life, and he didn't give the appropriate response. So Woo, if God Lord. intervenes in your life, it's important for you to give an appropriate response. Now, what yeah, should we do? Well, hallelujah. let's be thankful. Uh, mm. Give thanks to God. That, that's his will at all times, to give, give thanks. Give thanks. Mm. But if we're proud, if we're <laughs> proud, uh, then he's not going to give us grace. So we have to be thankful for what he's doing and then sacrificial living, live sacrificially to serve other people. So we humble ourselves. See, Hezekiah didn't do it. And what happened? The whole nation suffered because the king was proud and would not humble himself and would not be thankful for God's intervention and healing in amen, his life. Amen, amen, amen. Okay? So let's look at another example from uh, David, and this is uh, 2 Samuel, um, and it's uh, 2 Samuel, verse chapter 24, verses 24 and 25. Now, uh, David began to have great victories with his army. And God gave him all of these victories. And, and uh, so David said, well, I wonder just how many soldiers I've got. Oh, that, oh. That, was, that was a no-no right there. Oh, to, goodness. To start counting things. To, so he had yeah, a, he sent out yeah. a census. And, there, and then there was this, uh, uh, all of this evil came upon his nation because he wanted to see how strong he was. But you know, God was really doing miraculous things in his life. He was intervening miraculously and giving him these great victories. And, and he's wanting to look at it in his natural abilities mm. and how many soldiers mm. he had. And so there was all this evil coming upon them because he had numbered the people. So this is, should be a lesson to all of us. Don't be numbering, uh, don't be numbering things. Just recognize that God is doing miraculous things, things in yes, your life. Yes. Okay, and so uh, David then went down to a threshing floor, and he was going to make a sacrifice to God to get off this all this evil that was coming against him because of his sin. See, sin has consequences. Mm -hmm. and his sin was to number, and really he was limiting God. When he numbered the people, he was limiting God. And so that was a sin. Woo! There were consequences from that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's a word for at least three people that are on this video tonight. Do not limit or put limitations or restrictions on the Lord. Okay, so David went down there to this threshing floor and he was going to make a sacrifice. And the, and the man that owned the sacrifice said, well, oh, yes, if you want a sacrifice, you can do it here on my threshing floor, and I'll give you the, I'll uh, give you the oxen, and I'll, I'll give you the wood to burn the oxen on, so you can sacrifice them. David said, "No, the sacrifice has to cost me. I will not give a sacrifice or an offering to God that does not cost me." Mm -hmm. See, for you to sacrifice your life, there's got to be a cost in there. And you might say, "Oh, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice, but I'm going to watch TV and I'm going to eat." Uh, a bunch of junk food, and I'm going to do all of this. Well, where's the sacrifice? There has to be a sacrifice if you're going to sacrifice yourself to God. Uh, maybe it requires fasting, maybe some time in prayer, whatever whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, that has to cost you something. Now, when David made this great statement, and it should, it'll apply throughout the ages that 
the sacrifice that we make to God is going to have to cost us something. And uh, be, when, when he did that, when he sacrificed uh, the oxen there and uh, uh, sacrificed them to God, God healed the land. Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. this is an important point because when you make the sacrifice in your life and, and that you begin to serve other people, uh, this is not about all gathering things that you need for yourself. This is not all about you. See, your calling is not about you. Your calling is about serving other people. It's about reaching out oh, to wow. other people. Wow, that's your good. Your calling uh, is what God intended for you to accomplish on this earth, the legacy that you are to leave uh, other generations uh, uh, while you're on this earth, your legacy. That's what we're talking about, the calling, what it is that God saw that you could do with his abilities, not your abilities. You, you know, I know there's a lot of very talented people in this right, group tonight. Right, right. You have a charisma, you have gifts, you have uh, personality and presence, you have all of these things, but those are natural abilities. And to fulfill your calling, you've got to realize you need superhuman abilities, the superhuman abilities that come from the presence of the Holy Spirit oh, hallelujah, empowering hallelujah. you uh, through his grace. That's what you need to fulfill your calling. So uh, this is <laughs> this is an important message tonight. This is an important message tonight. Amen, amen. When we receive an intervention from God, then we need to humble ourselves and live sacrificially and serve other people and we get more and more grace. Hallelujah. More Hallelujah. and more grace. And that's why God can say to each of you, your latter days will be greater Everything than your former days. days because you're getting more and more grace. It's, a, it, it's an explosion uh, to know whether or not you are living in your calling. You look at grace. You, you look at how much grace is going on in your life. How much is God intervening in your life? Hallelujah. If God Hallelujah. is intervening in your life, there, there should be uh, grace is in increasing and abounding mm -hmm. in your life and that's the superhuman power of the holy spirit operating in your life so we're looking at tonight how do you know if you're walking in your calling well it's going to be related to how much grace is god yes, releasing yeah, in your life hallelujah. if you're not seeing any grace if you're not seeing any grace you're not seeing any intervention of god i would have to raise the question are you walking in your calling? Because there is going to be grace released in your calling. I want to give you a couple of examples, a couple of men that I, I met in recent times. Uh, one was in Mexico. He had gone to college, gone to college to be a financial analyst, and uh, he had a degree in that, and he had a professional job, and then a pastor came up to him and said, well, I I see you're called, you're called to be a uh, pastor mm -hmm. in a little bitty rural community. So you go out there, you, you leave your job, you leave your profession, you go out there. And uh, he, so he did that because he knew he had a calling. But don't you know, we all have a calling. Mm -hmm. and, and so so many times, and this, this comes from pastors, they, they only see other pastors. They, mm -hmm. they say, okay, mm -hmm. everybody ought to be a pastor. But if everybody's a pastor, pastor. who are they going to preach to? Amen. And, and so Amen. this man, this young man, he had a, a profession. He had a, a professional job. He had a, a good income. And a pastor uh, took him out of all of that, sent him into a little rural community. And let me tell you, he left his family without That's food. food. Without food, that, Amen. that was such a perversion of what he was really called to do because they only saw him uh, as, as a pastor and he was so much more than that. Okay, the second example I want to give you is a man in Cuba I met a few years ago and he was an architect. He had gone to college and, and was an architect and then he uh, worked professionally in a firm oh, that built home, homes and he wanted to be a builder. So 
He uh, bought land, he bought building supplies, he got permits to build houses. And then a pastor comes to him one day and says, Oh, you're called to be a pastor. So I need you to sell all that land, sell all those supplies and give those permits, just destroy those permits. And you go over there in this city and you be a pastor mm -hmm. over there. What a perversion of a calling. Let me tell you, everybody's not called to be a pastor. You need to know where your calling is. And what position. And what position you are in. It's everybody cannot be a pastor, but you're needed to be a pastor you need, I'm sorry, you're needed for your calling in the area God sends you. It may be in the marketplace, you know, in the marketplace, mm -hmm. in corporations, in businesses, in banks. They need apostles. They need prophets. They need evangelists, yes, pastors, and teachers. teachers. They need all of these gifts. They need, they need gifts in, in the marketplace. Place. They need uh, these gifts, uh, uh, equipping gifts in um, the educational system, in the government, in uh, all of these different areas, there are callings and people are being, God's people are being placed in strategic positions yes. uh, throughout the uh, the country and through the, uh, the economy and in all of these areas. God has plans that he created and he established before time began and uh, natural people just think so small uh, and cannot see the big glorious plan. You are a part of a great plan. God mm -hmm. created mm -hmm. this great plan for, for all of his body before he ever created the universe. Amen. And, Amen. and now we need to listen to this. You cannot, you cannot, Find your calling. You cannot decide. We'll use this word. You cannot decide what your calling is. What you need to do is discover what your calling is. You cannot decide. See, a lot of people want to want to put a lot of professional careers up on the board and then throw a, a dart at them and see what they're going to be, what yeah. college they're going to be, or, or what their profession is going to be. You cannot decide. That's not up to you. God already decided that. It's your responsibility is to discover what God planned for you. And that's how you do it. I want to think, uh, tell you about a, a story of a, of a young man that had been on drugs and uh, those uh, drugs had so blown his mind that uh, he could not function very well. His mother told him, uh, before you start doing something, you ask God what to do and ask him to help you do it, and then you do your best. So ask God, and then do your best, okay? And so he got a job emptying trash cans uh, in this big manufacturing company. And so, uh, but he would ask God how to do it, and then he would do his best. That's what his mother taught him over and over again. And, and after a while, uh, he, he went, uh, he got promoted. He started getting promotions uh, in that company. And he just had this simple little plan. Ask God uh, and and then do your, do, best. do your best. That's what his mother taught him. And so he went, uh, after getting some promotions, he went to the owner of the manufacturing company and, and said, I, I'd like to go to, uh, to schooling so I could learn how to do things better here. And the owner of the company said, no, I, I can't let you go because you're the only person I trust here. And I'm going, when I die, I'm going to let you inherit this. I'm going to give you Ooh. all this company because, and look, what oh, did he do? Wow. He just simply asked God, God to help him, and, and he did, did his, his best. best. That's a pretty simple plan to follow. Ooh, and and God promoted him. Mm. So I'm talking about promotions here. How do we get promotions in, in, in life, and, and what do we do with them? Well, when God intervenes in your life, he's going to promote you. And when he promotes you, what do you do? You humble yourself even more. And when you humble yourself, you're thankful for what he did and you make sacrifices to serve other people. I mean, and, that, and then you get more and more grace. So when you do that year after year, 
year after year, you're going to have more and more grace. And so your latter years are supposed to be be better better than than your your former years years because you get more and more grace. And that's his intervention. That's his superhuman power that begins when your natural abilities end, his superhuman abilities kick in. That's when they begin. When you know you're at the end and you can't do what God is calling you to do. I want to encourage you today. This is about identity. What is your identity? What have you been called to do? How, what can we do? And how can we find out? Mm-hmm. Well, you do not decide what your calling is. You have to discover it by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You ask God and do your best. And a lot of people, see, are just sitting down on God and they're not doing anything in their calling. And so God's not able to refine their steps. But if you get up and you start doing it, you begin asking God what he has for you to do and ask him to help you. And then you do your best. Then he begins to refine your path. And you might be going over and uh, off of the path that he wanted, but he'll, he can bring you back if you're doing something. But if you're just sitting down on God, uh, why would he want to reveal something to you? If you're not fulfilling your calling, if you have no interest in fulfilling your calling, why is he going to reveal to you what your calling is? You've got to seek him. Seek God. And what is it that he has called you to do? It's important. You have a calling. The only way you'll be satisfied on this life, on this earth and in this life, is for you to discover your calling and walk in your calling. And he will give you grace. You keep humbling yourself, humble yourself and humble yourself. He give you more and more and more grace. But if you ever stop recognizing and responding to his intervention, you'd be like Hezekiah and you'll bring a curse on the people around you. But be more like David. And even though you make mistakes, uh, you Mm -hmm. humble yourself and sacrifice to God and uh, let God intervene in the situation and bring healing uh, to the land and uh, the people around will be benefited because you keep humbling yourself. It may be that you fall and and there, but that doesn't matter. You you keep getting up. A righteous man falls seven times. That says just a limitation on how many times a righteous person can fall. Mm. But there is no limit on how many times you can can get get up up. and keep going on with God because God has great things for every person here. You you know you have a calling on your life. And maybe you haven't known how to discover it and how to walk in it and whether or not you're walking in it. Let me tell you, you need the grace of God operating in your life and those supernatural interventions and you get that more and more every every day and every year. More and more grace is given to you when you keep yourself humble and, and uh, sacrifice a sacrificial living. It's a lifestyle of giving. Now, maybe when you first come to the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, you you make a sacrifice and and you get this reward. And but but see, giving is not about earning something from God. It's not about oh, I'm going to give this and. I'm going to get something back. Well, that's kind of like a slot machine. Uh, you go down to Las Vegas if, if you think that's the way God operates. You you can't you can't uh, just put in uh, uh, things and expect that return. God uh, may want you to sacrifice something today that that's going to affect your children or your grandchildren. Children, that's right. Well, they that's will right. have breakthroughs, or maybe you'll have a breakthrough. Uh, down when you need it 10 years from now or 20 (laughs) years from now. You you need to know how God operates. God has a plan, a great plan, and you fit in that plan. And you need to find out where you fit in in that plan. That's your calling. And and discover what God has. Just ask him and do your best. Glory to God. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry.